please note that this video contains spoilers. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast, so while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. Man, movie, thoughts. I suppose I will start with the twist of the bad guy. I think the name of the actress I call him Friels or something like that. Louis... Louis Strack. With the... Yeah, you know that he's introduced quite early on, and you have that scene of the Julie, that's her name, confronting him, and you you basically know where this is gonna go. It's, it's that thing of everybody in the audience knows, even though the character is, has, has not realized it. We, we know that you shouldn't, in, in a story like this, you shouldn't confront the, well, I guess in real life you shouldn't either confront someone with their having bribed someone or, or such. You know that something horrible is going to happen to her. Only it doesn't. In that first scene, we just... He, he just warns her about the... Excuse me. About Durant. And... Almost immediately after we see Durant attacking, excuse me, the lab. And you, you, from that, you're sort of tricked. Well, you basically are tricked. I certainly, I fell for it when I first watched this. Obviously not on the subsequent viewings. You, you believe that, okay, well, he kind of, well, he knew what was going on, but he, he seems charming, and he, he comes right out and admits it. He even says it before she does. She doesn't get around to saying, you bribe someone. She just says, these look suspicious, and then he says, well, they're bribes. And you, you, you're like, why would, it, why would he admit that if he's actually a bad guy, if he isn't... If he's not trying to hide it, basically, and through the rest of the movie, you don't really think about him. Or you certainly don't think about him as he might be the bad guy. And then suddenly, there at the end, she finds the the, the documents at his place. I think that was how it was. Again, the, the, like I said in the review, the movie just moves so fast, there's so much to process. Something like that. She, she figures it out, and she is... And, and he talks about building the city, and he, he shows off uh, the, the, the construction that is going on, or the yeah, the, the skeletal workup, which I guess is where they end up not long after. And he's... And, and again, you think that you figured it out. You... The, the first time you see the two of them in an office and she's talking about bribery, you think he's going to kill her. And then the second time, you again think, now he's going to kill her. Now we know he really is the bad guy. And 
again, she, it just, and, and like, he, he pretends to not be at all worried, and it's because he's actually really smart, which is also why he admitted the bribery. She's not going to buy him saying, no, 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 those weren't bribes. You know, I mean, she's not a Republican voter. So, instead, he just, he uses it. He, he, he's really thinking on his feet. Pretty much every single time. He, I don't think he was expect. yeah, he wasn't even expecting her to show up. She just showed up and said, we can't have anything to do with, the, or, I don't know. Yeah, she's breaking up with him or something because Peyton is back, and and he also, from that, figures out, well, that must be it. And I love that Durant's line, he's extinct, I saw to it myself. And it, right after she leaves the office, he just calmly walks over to the desk, send Mr. Durant in. So it's like, or, or send Robert in, actually, I think it was first name basis. He's in the building. So yeah, there's there's absolutely no no question about how guilty he is at that point. And it's just like, well, now we know he's the cause of our recent troubles and I think we have a guide. You know, where is he? We have a guide. And they follow her, and they got there really quickly. Did she run there, and they drove? How did they get her, get there, so that they could capture her immediately after? I'm, I'm not entirely sure, but anyway. You know, she has that... It, it's just a really good way of handling that. I think for most of the movie, you don't even think about his character, really. It's just that when you see her at least relaxed with someone else, it's not a complete stranger. It actually is someone who we've seen before. And you do kind of, you, you feel Peyton's pain at least. And he of course takes it harder than he, he's, I don't know, I guess having, major burns on your body makes you emo. So he takes it as she is now in love with this other man and looking very faint of the opera as he's looking down on that and with the face and and the But, but yeah, you, you forget about him for most of the movie. And then suddenly, there at the very end, he's sort of the main bad guy. He's, you, you know, when, when Durant walks into the office, you're like, oh, well, Durant takes orders from him. So, yeah, you, you thought that Durant was the top. And, and really, when you stop and think about it all, put, put it all together, the very start of the movie, you see Durant... What, what is it, spreading his, increasing his, what's it called, territory. And you think, well, he's a mob boss. You don't think more about it because it's not like something that you wouldn't expect him to do it's for a mob boss. So you don't think twice about it, but in reality, He's buying, he's getting the land so that Strack can build on it. So it, it makes perfect sense. For the entire movie, he is on his payroll. And is, there's that great line, Robert doesn't like to pay taxes. <laughs> Fantastic. And I really like how after this, after not being thought of for much of the movie, I mean, Durant 
you think of for the entire movie, and you expect him to be there until the very end, which is also why it works so great when he's suddenly killed in the chopper. There, and and the movie continues after that. You think that that's you think that the very end is going to be him, you know, Durant getting killed. You you expect that from much of the movie, and then suddenly there's someone behind him, and after not being thought of much for most of the movie, Strack turns out to be able to balance on these, excuse me, what are they called, beams, I guess, excuse me, what was it, six, excuse me, four, four inch wide, for the ladies, and 650 feet down, down, down. that was really, Terrifying, and it's such a great way to make that scene interesting because you've seen it so many times before. The bad guy has the good guy's love, and the good guy is there to rescue her. And the twist is that they are all the way up there, and I love the the pan down, and you just see these. What are those nails sticking up out of the? What is that? Where is the do what is the point of having nails sticking out of the ground like that? It it is purely there and it's purely shown to us so that we think, man, I hope Dark Man doesn't fall from there. And and it's established very early, right when Durant steps off the lift, I guess, up there, clearly he is not as good at this balancing act. And then he gets unmasked. You, you have that great thing. I love how it's established, the, or it's established, I don't know, the, the, there's that line about your wife, you know, your wife died. What are, what are the good news? Your wife died. And he's just completely deadpan. And Strack maybe, you know, does this stupid laugh. So you maybe kind of think, oh, there, there might be a wife. And then it's, you know, I would hate for your kids to grow up with a, without a father. They do look up to me. At that point, Dark Man still hasn't quite gotten the hang of being comfortable playing someone else. You know, it's, it's clear that they, if they had gone after a theater major, they would have been toast. Because every single time he dons a mask, he's like, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm totally me. Don't look at, oh, passing money under the table? Okay, I'll just look at it as if this hasn't been done. He, yeah. Anyway, I know, increasing tension. He, you know, he says, they do look up to me, and then, yeah, Robert, you don't have any kids, and then he yanks off the mask, and Darkman is standing there, and it's actually that kind of... It's actually the first time someone unmasks him, and he's really kind of exposed. He... And, and that also really shows this is the smart villain. This is the guy who knows what's... You know... He's impersonated what, two or three different, let's see, there's Smiley, well I suppose Smiley doesn't completely count, anyway, he, he impersonates Durant himself, he impersonates, what is it, Pauly, I think, with the money, yeah, I suppose that does cover it, my point is, those times, they didn't see through it, you know, I'm, they didn't even figure out about Polly at all. They they killed Polly before figuring out that there was someone impersonating Polly, and suddenly there's this guy who can actually unmask him. And maybe heck, maybe some people in the audience had guessed that that wasn't Durant. That it's Dark Man because Durant couldn't have survived that helicopter crash. Sure. 
until they make a sequel, until they made a sequel, and yeah, but it's it, you, but you don't expect Strack to unmask him. I suppose that is. Oh, and I, I love the what is it? Bolt, bolt gun, or something like that that he picks up up there, and he shoots the hand, nails that to or bolts, I guess, to this supporting beam, something like that. I'm not a construction worker, as you might have figured. And he he keeps kind of you know, picking at raw nerves of Darkman's, and finally Darkman just, oh, that has got to hurt, just, yeah, and grabs, yeah, just fantastic, and, and the, the bit, the, the actual demise of Strike, where he sort of, and, and the swinging, oh, so, as I said in the review, it's fairly Batman-esque, you know, and he sweeps in, saves her, and then further, and the deuce is firing it like a machine gun throughout. And speaking of machine guns, I love how Durant did not only bring a, or only, a grenade launcher onto this helicopter, he also brought an M60, because, you know, one of those two heavy weapons is not enough, clearly. Anyway, he fires out, and finally, Darkman swings in and gets at him, and he has Strank there by the leg, and Strank is like, ah, I know you, I know you too well. You're not, you can't drop me. It's not something you could live with. I'm learning to live with a lot of things these days. That's, that's really great. And, and that line really tells us that he has accepted that he is a monster. He is not for public consumption. He must hide. He must live in darkness. And that is a, it's, it's a theme that runs throughout the movie, basically. Certainly, from the moment he becomes created, he is, you know, he, he wakes up at the hospital, gets away, and he, he comes a Julie. And this is, you know, just 24 hours earlier, they were all lovey-dovey. They were really, really happy together. In, in, in that scene, it's, it's kind of like the... It's, it's that Hollywood-ish, overly romanticized romance kind of thing. It's just perfect life together, basically. They're just, they're so happy together. And then he comes at her, and she just get it, hurries away from him. And he doesn't understand at first, and then he, he gets... To, to a mirror, and he cuts off the bandage, and he looks, and, and then he begins to understand. And from then on, he can't completely get away from this, and then there's the cat's reaction. I have to wonder, did that cat, maybe, again, maybe I missed it, but did that cat actually escape his lair? before it got blown up. I mean, it's it's nice poetic justice. I really love the poetic justice in this movie. You know, blowing up Smiley with the same thing, and the, the hologram thing. Because we knew the computer could do holograms. It, it did with the face thing, so sure, why not something else as well? And, you know, the... the and, and Rick, I guess it's not necessarily... Well, I suppose it's kind of Rick killed the guy for Peyton not... You know, killed, killed Peyton's partner for Peyton apparently lying, even when Peyton wasn't lying. He didn't know about the memorandum. And 
Rick told Darkman everything, but Darkman still kills him, I guess that sort of works. Anyway, the... Yeah, the... the yeah, did the cat actually survive? Get, did, was it there when it... Anyway, well, I guess he wasn't on the friendliest terms of it with the whole oh, See the Dancing Freak sequence. Uh, that is one of the things where I find the movie gets a little too goofy for my taste, but I don't know. The other people might think it's fine. But yeah, the, the, yeah there, there's that sequence and there's the carnival, excuse me, and, and when he talks to her about what if I were scarred. And just trying to figure out, and that is an actual, you know, you, you do, that, that is an actual thing. It, it changes things. It, you, you don't want to think that it does, but it changes things. It's difficult to, you know, you, you, it, it sounds superficial to say. But you just can't, it, it's not quite the same when you can't be out in public with that person, for example, because they don't want to be looked at by other people and things like that. And I, I find the, the movie in general just does really well with that theme. Wish I could. Anyway, the I quite like the layer in general. I love when he lights the old newspaper and he throws it, and it just lands and lights up this big fire, this old-time big furnace kind of thing. And it just, that whole, you know, it is this condemned property, and it's just a perfect place. It's, it is so dank and nasty and broken. It, it's, it's obviously very reflective of Peyton himself, the way he feels now. And I, I like when in that, you know, j just before he gets up on the chopper and he is being chased by the goons, he will jump, th th there are these broken staircases where he can run up a few steps and then there's a gap before some more steps and he just runs up and jumps over the gap and hurries further. It's really, really cool looking. I actually kind of wish there were, there were games of this concept. I think that would work out. I, I don't think there are, at least. I might also read comics around that, which I'm not sure if there are either. I only know three movies. Anyway, the... And that's also the... the yeah, I suppose I should talk a little bit about the the attack on the lair itself. We you know but basically we have these two guys, I guess it's Smiley and then that other guy, what is it, Gooseman or Rudy? I Gooseman I think, but I'm not sure. The Latino guy, I think. He goes in and he's like, oh, Smiley, where are you, man? And yeah, he's, he's Latino because he's the guy who keeps saying que pasa. And he's like, where are you? Close. And it's just that kind of thing. It's, it really works well with him in the shadows and him hiding. Very, very Batman-esque. I also really love when he jumps down behind Rick to get him, and yeah, I'll, I'll just briefly talk about it. It's the way he 
jumps out, and you, you see him in the frame, and he lands, and Rick just turns around, and he looks around a couple of places. Okay, he's, he's not there. And he turns back around, and then hand on the face, pull away. It's, that works really well. And it's actually... That almost is to be expected. That, that's very evil dead right there. Turning around and then turning back around and then there's there. It's, it's actually an old home cliche, I suppose, but it works well. And he's just really good. Raimi is really good at making you think something is going to happen and then something else happens. Or at least making it work, even if you can kind of figure out that something's going to come and it's going to be really suddenly. It's going to be a jump scare. Anyway. The, the Latino guy, he hears the close, and then Dark Man leaps out of the shadows from up above, and the Latino guy fires up a couple of times. And you're like, did he get him? Did, did Dark Man survive? What's going on? And suddenly, and, and Smiley is standing and looking around. Smiley is very trigger happy, I noticed that. He, he really loves to fire off that, what is it, an AK? Anyway, and he... Yeah, the Smiley is standing around, looking, and suddenly he sees Smiley coming at him. And he... What is he? He knocks him out, I think, at first, yeah. And he tears off the Smiley mask. And it's Peyton. And... Suddenly Peyton opens his eyes and is screaming something at Smiley and Smiley shoots him. And then he goes down and another mask and it was actually the Latino guy wearing two masks. And while he's looking there just horrified, another Smiley is right by him and he's just looking and really, really... He has this Joker expression on his face, as in the Joker, as in Batman's the Joker. And Smiley looks at him, and he's just, oh, that's awesome. And it knocks him out. And then the, you know, explosion. And, and then the, what's it called? We have... You know, the, the Durant. Durant is in the chopper and he's like, I guess if I if I want something done, I gotta do it, and up comes the hand, and suddenly Peyton's there, and then the the chopper lifts off, and suddenly he's hanging there on the chopper and they're struggling there. That whole scene, I must say, in spite of the bad effects, or the, the dated effects, they were not really bad for the time overall. I'm not sure they could have done much better back then, in 1990. Yeah, but, you know, the obvious rear projection is obvious. But with that said, you'd think that something that would be equally kind of... You know, you, you'd think... Anyway, I gotta finish one thought before I start another, sorry. In spite of the effects, I gotta say, I really dig that entire scene. It's really, well, apart from maybe the running on top of the, what was it, truck, I think, something like that. A long car, at least, maybe it was a bus. That is a bit goofy for my taste, especially with the music. But other than that, I really, really like that entire sequence. And the, the shooting at the police helicopter, and... When, when he finally gets, he, he ties up the thing, the, the rope, there's a hook on it, he hooks that you know, on the top of the truck, and it drags the helicopter into the bridge, and that, that's a really cool way to kill him off, and it happens so quickly, you almost don't see what's happening. It's it's not that kind of thing where it takes forever to get to it. You know, and I think that Rainey does a really good job of 
switching back and forth between spending time building up tension for something and having something happen so suddenly that you don't see it coming or that you think that it's going to happen a little later. So it's effectively subversive. And a good example of that is also look at the difference between the two exploding lab situations. With Peyton, it is very gradual and tense. tension is built up very nicely. With Smiley, it's very quick. You, you think that he's going to be able to stop it because he just runs over. You think that no explosion is going to happen. And then, oh, there's a hologram. Boom. It happens very, very quickly. And it's also important because they're in the middle of an action scene, really. Durant is still right outside with in, in a helicopter. And we already know he's, he's still got the grenade launch, which he uses quite well. Except once he's on the road, he seems to keep blowing up cars that Peyton isn't on. I don't know, maybe he's a car lover and he was expressing that he didn't think that that particular make and model was that satisfactory, you know. Anyway, what I was going to talk about Right, the effects that were also the hands burning off. I think that's like claymation. It's it's some form of stop motion, I'm pretty sure. And it's also it's it's like with Evil Dead. You'd think that it would not at all work. It's such it's a today, it's dated. Back then it was completely perfectly workable. I don't think about it when I watch. It's it's actually kind of like when when you watch Alien. That movie's from 1979. Of course, some of the effects are going to be dated. There are things in it that they play so effectively that you don't stop to think about. If if you were if if you watch the scene independently, you'd probably think, "Wow, that looks bad." But with the when you just see the hands, you're it's it's devastating because it's, you're you're so happy for him. He just he made that big discovery. The, the, oh, it's all about the light. There's something in the darkness. We're gonna make this work. We've made this is the first big step. This is gonna happen. And suddenly they're killing his assistant. They're burning off his hands, melting his face, blowing up his lab, and destroying all his nose. It's just it's a perfect storm of destruction. They just utterly destroy everything that was, it, it was looking so good, you know. I like how the movie actually <laughs> follows up on pretty well every goon of Dark, of, of Durant's. Except for the the one-legged guy. I, the, I think the last time we see him might be at the... At, at the apartment. Well, actually, I guess it was Julie's apartment. Where... The, we see him hopping briefly. And... and it's, it's one of those 90 degree turns. I really love that the sequence. As I mentioned in the review, I think that might be the last time we see him. And we saw him before that in the, you know, it turns out that his wooden leg, wooden leg? No leg. We see that that is actually a gun and a great way to hide it. A great way to hide a gun. And come to think of it, what was the name? Eddie Black has really ineffective goons because Durant, Durant and Smiley, I think that's Smiley grabbing the submachine gun, take them out with a submachine gun and a revolver. And they've got cars. And I think they outnumber him. Wow. Anyway, 
the yeah yeah I'm, I'm pretty sure we don't see what happens to him excuse me but other than that all of the goons excuse me are actually followed up on we see them die we see them and I think a bunch of them are even in the first scene. Like I said, Smiley's there, definitely. I'm pretty sure Rick is there in that first scene. And just in general, his goons are there. And, and over the course of the film, we see them be killed off. I also really like how the, the send-off with Pauly. Well, Pauly. Putting the first-class ticket in his front jacket pocket. Have a nice flight. And he flies out of it. This is excellent. It was remarkably poor planning on Peyton's part. I, I suppose he didn't know that the that the dude would be flying out the window, but still to just be sitting there next to and and the woman screams because Raimi likes making women scream in his movies, maybe especially in his comic book movies. So to be fair, if I saw a, a guy die, his twin brother's skin melt, I'd probably scream too. Hopefully not like a girl though. I guess she has an excuse. But, but yeah, you, all of them you see die. I, I really love Darkman's tactics of making it... First he kills Rick and nobody knows what happened to him. And then he, I mean, he has Pauly in his, his power. He could easily just kill him, but that would attract attention. So he poses as him and even dresses him and makes it look like he embezzled. And because he goes after Pauly, it's not just random. He could have gone after one of the others. Because of that, he forces Durant out to collect money, and the and and with the with the, the hold up, I I love how clearly staged the evidence is. The name's not Buddy; it's Durant. Robert G. Durant. See my face, hear my voice, see, see, see me telling my full name. Is this good enough evidence? Wow. And the cops come and arrest him. And so Darkman, I guess Darkman breaks into his house. We don't need to see that because of course he can break into the dude's house. He's got super strength. He'll break a window and get in. And yeah. And he hitches a ride and suddenly they think that they're... And he picks up the money. And I guess he even leaves with the money. Possibly, but yeah, and <laughs> we, we could just barely get them to put you out for bail. I mean, we, the, the, their evidence was pretty severe. Anyway, the, it's, it's a very effective, it's like guerrilla tactics. Again, they, I don't know exactly how Peyton figured it. Well, I guess he is a scientist. He's logical, good at the logical thinking. So I guess that's how he figured. But yeah, I mean, it, just think about if it was actually like John Rambo that they burned the face and the hands off of. Think about how, if Peyton was this effective, how effective would he have been? But, but yeah, just the, the way he uses sort of their mutual trust against them. The, the fact that he knows what they look like and they think he's dead. He knows about them and they don't know about him. It's, it's very much guerrilla tactics. Excuse me. Excuse me. And I, I really like the... And, and the thing about the the voice, excuse me, thing, excuse me, I love how not at all in existence that would have been, by the way, that is such sci-fi, 1990, a microphone you could implant that would make your voice sound just like 
a different person's voice just from you hearing a few words they're saying. Yeah, I <laughs> don't think so, but I'm really glad it's in there still. I, I, again, like I said earlier, this is, he's really bad at first, at least, at pretending to be someone else. He's constantly touching his face, for one thing, and again, yeah, attention. And at first, he, as Pauly, he's not even talking, which, you know, he didn't have his voice, so that, but yeah. But, but yeah, with, with Durant, he, he has his voice, and so the, the Chinese dude, I love how it's, it's literally Hong Kong restaurant. Yeah, that's, that's what Durant says to the cab driver, Hong Kong restaurant, and step on it. Wow, you just did not want to think of something actual anyway. He, yeah, the, the Chinese guy is like, yo, uh, I hope I will someday soon be able to give you money, but I have nothing right now. And, you know, three big Chinamen coming up behind him. He's like, goodbye. And he's taking his hand, goodbye, Robert. And Robert's like, get away and saying, you're going to have money to by the time I finish this cigar. And at first it's this long thing and and suddenly it's like a you know, pinky finger long and in his mouth and lights it and then he burns his hand and they're like if he's gonna do that to himself what wouldn't he do to us? And he's like okay sure there are three big Chinamen here and there's only like two of you okay sure I'm at money okay here and in general, I really like the whole thing with the cigar cutter. I, I like the thing, well, if he doesn't give us money, I'll have to add him to my collection. And he's got this collection of fingers. It's, you, you do have to wonder if he always takes all the fingers, because he seems to only keep one per person. So it's the other one, the, the other nine just, you know, he... I don't know, he, he doesn't do anything part way, he, he goes the whole nine yards with everything. And the, the thing, Rick, get his fingers, get, get the, what was it, get the assistant's fingers. Man, it was lucky for Peyton, he didn't grab, they didn't grab his fingers. That would have, that would have been interesting if he had fought back with no fingers. Anyway. And, and that first scene with, with Eddie Black. I, I really like the characterization to you. you uh, one, one thing is that they're establishing Durant as this big, important mob boss. But a really good way to do that is to have him defeat another mob boss. So they introduce Eddie Black and Eddie is clearly in charge, and you know, tell him no, tell him no to, and he, and, and yeah, so he, he gets the drop on him with the leg machine gun and the one handgun there, and he is, you know, I, I have ten conditions. Or, no, it's right. I, I have some conditions too. And he gets the fingers, you know. I try to, what was it, control my temper. I'm not always successful. And my third condition, I have seven more. I have the feeling that, I get the feeling that Durant doesn't really know what a condition is and none of these goons have the cojones to tell him because they don't want to become part of that collection of fingers. I suppose that might more or less cover it. Yes, I 
suppose so. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.